Hey everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101 where we give you fun new rock painting ideas that anybody can create. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get painting. So if you're joining in live, feel free to say hello and where you're watching from. As you can see, we have quite a few stones um, laid out here. We are going to do some pour painting today. We've got Kyle from California. Hello, Teresa, Ria, Joan. Thanks for watching and joining in with us today. Um, we have, let's see here, Candy, Sonia, can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. So we're going to start by mixing up some paints for some pour painting. So uh, V is going to make some stones to pass out for her Valentine's this year. So we're going to base coat them today so that she can make pretty hearts and word rocks Yay. on top of them. So she picked out the colors we're going to be mixing. So we've got a teal, white, kind of for in between layers. A bronze, bronze and, and pink. pink. Slash magenta. Yes, it is. It is magenta. That's what it actually says, magenta. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna mix each one of our colors. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I'm mixing, you you but I'm gonna go ahead and whoop, I'm gonna go ahead and get her started mixing so one. You make your own, and okay. I do mine. Well, I'm gonna put the paint in for you. Okay. okay. All right. So we're gonna mix our tube style paints. Hold on with Floetrol, okay? I'll show you the bottle for this. I have the jumbo one, so getting it down here. So you wanna go about 50-50 paint and Floetrol. Mine was in the garage. It seems like a little bit thicker than normal. So we always end up adding a little bit, here, you stir that one. Bring it up here so they can see you stirring it. Um, a little bit of water as well. Now, if you don't have Floetrol and you're not sure if you wanna, oh, whoops. <laughs> That's okay, it won't hurt anything. Um, if you it's like replay, <laughs> it is a replay behind us. Our uh, screen where we can see ourselves is a little delayed. Um, what was I saying? Oh, if you don't have flow troll and you're not sure if you're going to get big into pore painting, um, you can make a DIY version of it. All it is is a is leveling agent. Out? Just keep going, keep stirring, stirring, stirring. Make sure you scrape the sides as well. So it's a leveling agent that you buy at hardware stores like Ace Hardware, Home Depot, places like that. I'll show you the bottle here in a second. Okay, we're gonna add a little water to those in a little bit. I'm gonna get you mixing my uh, next color here so that I can show them the bottle though, okay? Okay. So we're gonna go just a little bit of white. I like to do white in between my layers of colors to kind of keep them a little bit separated. And also so it makes a cool effect. It does make a cool effect. Go ahead and start blending that one. I can't blend this one if it's the same color. Well, just keep stirring, stirring, stirring. <laughs> She's doing white, so it kind of matches the flow chart a little bit. Yeah, it's exactly the same color <laughs> as the flow chart. Okay. Do the loose. So those are your last two colors. This you, is good. You can pull the other one off to the side so I can bring this giant bottle in here. All right, here it comes. I buy the big one. It's called Flood Flow Trough. So look for this label. You want the latex-based kind, not the oil-based kind. Um, if you want to make your own at home, though, if you're not sure if you want to do pour painting or if it's really your jam, um, you can make DIY um, flow well, agent, you could say, this. with 50% um, white glue like Elmer's glue 50% water and just mix it up really good and you'll end up with about the same consistency and, and for your first time you don't have to do that much right you can yeah. do like just one lock yes and we might mix more paints as we go along here we're just starting with this and then we're gonna go from there so um, once you've got your paint mixed with your flow trawl if it's the tube paint see how that's kind of a little bit thick still it doesn't really Mine does, kind of. Now this was this style of acrylic, which she's got here with the bronze. It's a little bit thinner to start with, so you might not need as much water. So that's why... We got this to be thin. Right. Can I do this one, mine over here first real quick? And then okay. I don't know how much you're going to need in that one. So we're just going to add just the littlest bit of water at a time. This is just a little pipette. Um, I don't know how much that one's going to need, so hold on one second. I don't know how much, just one drop. 
Okay, well don't make it too thin. You want it to be like warm honey, so it should drizzle down. Just two drops. Yep, you can always add more. But you can't take off. <laughs> so start with just one drop. Yeah. One or two drops. All right, so let's see here. You want it to kind of drizzle down. And I'm still a little bit thick. Mine's still a little thick too. Okay, so go ahead and add a little bit more water. Okay. And make sure you stir it in really well. All right, that looks way better. There we go. So we're gonna get a drizzle. There we right. go. Make sure you mix that in real well. Make sure you scrape the edges. That's why a popsicle stick works well. I don't know if you can see that while I'm stirring, but you can really scrape those edges and really make sure you're getting all the paint off the bottom. You want it really well mixed. Okay. Why do I keep on saying that? I don't know. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of water into our teal here and get these other colors mixed up. All right, I'm going right back into my pink one more time. It was just a little thick. Sometimes these big, so these style paints are a lot thicker. So sometimes it takes just a little bit more liquid to get them. On, on rocks, you just, you, you wanna make sure that the paint's gonna I move for you. I thought you said Roxy. No. All right, we good? How's that one looking? How's that feel? Mm. So see, when it drizzles, you kinda want it to touch, stay up and touch the bottom and long drips. Let me see. Yeah, I need more depth. This one needs a little more. All right, so when you're stacking, we I like to use these little medicine cups. I think this one's mine. That one is that yours. One's yours. Um, and you just start stacking colors, just a little drizzle of each one. You can stack them on top of each other, so Should it kind of creates a ring. Should we start with the white or start with the color? I would start with a little bit of white, and then do a drop of color. You can take, yeah, that to the side. A drop of color, drop of white, drop of color, drop of white, kind of back and forth. You don't need much of each one. And if you pour it on the side, that's okay. Like that. You could do more if you want to, but there's not any wrong way of adding your colors. You can do it with in All right. whichever order you want it. To so be let's in. start stacking these paints here. I'm ahead of you. Yeah. So I'm just gonna do mine down the side here. We're just gonna start, and you can drizzle in circles. You can do stripes. You can do however you like. However it. you like. So you aim you on can this do side. More than oh, one at a time. Mm -hmm. All right. So ready? So, so we're gonna start pouring. Go. You can pour from up high. You go across a few, but they will. It will spread. So make sure you leave a little bit of empty space on your rocks, and we have them on this cookie cooling rack. Pancake rack. Well, we don't use it for pancakes or cookies anymore, though, do we? <laughs> because you can tilt. Oh, you spread yours out a lot, huh? That's okay. So I'm going to show, anyways. I wasn't paying attention to yours. <laughs> you can use a little bit more on each rock, but we'll go back and add some more to each of those. So when you have it on a rack like we this, huh? Do you want to? We can. You can tilt the whole rack. And you can see the paint start to move, or, or you can just tilt rocks. Or you can just tilt rocks. And if you tilt your rocks, you can kind of do them over. Oops, sorry. You can do it over um, your other stones, so that if it drips, you can catch it and not be wasteful. Right. The paint. You can also help move your paint over the edges with a popsicle stick. If you don't want to get as messy. So as long as it starts going over the edge, you can kind of help it along the way like that. This one's really cool looking. Look at this one. So I've got to go a little bit more vertical here so that I can get this move in a little bit more. Look at how pretty that looks. Look how pretty this looks. That one is really pretty, yes. See, so right here when you have like an edge like that, you can kind of 
tap it, now tilt it that way, and it will start moving over that edge a little bit for you. Okay, so let's get this one up. This one looks really neat. So these little dots happen. Which it makes a very cool effect. Um, some people will add like a some sort of silicone or oil to their paints, but naturally with the flow trial, you'll still get a little bit. People call those cells in. They don't look like cells. I don't know why they call them cells. Like, um, what do they do? I didn't make up for painting, honey. <laughs> there we go. So you can kind of get that up over the edge. You can come back with more paint as well and drizzle it in empty spaces. But once there's a little bit of liquid, then it will move a little bit better. If it hits dry rock, sometimes it kind of gets stuck. But I, some people will pour so much paint and I don't like to do that. Ooh, that looks beautiful, honey. Can you hold it this way so they can see? All right, let's get this one moving. Look at this one's kind of cool. It's very pink. If you want to stack some more paint. What did you do? Did I do that? I didn't do it. Oh, I don't know how that happened. If you want to stack some more paints and do another layer on yours, you can. I'll have to. Because you spread yours out a lot more. Get this all the way to the edge here. And then we'll let it do its thing. Look at that one. That one has mostly pink, but it looks so cool. Look at Last thing you can do if you have a lot of paint overage is what they call a lot of people call dips, mm -hmm. where you can take but that was so close. Um, a rock and dip it right in the paint that's landed underneath where you're pouring. So I'm going to show them that really quick here, and then we're going to wrap up this video and we can finish our rocks. Okay? So I'm going to move a couple of these things to the side. My head this. I'm going to scoot this over just a smidge. Okay? I'm just turning this. It's okay if it drips on our table a little bit. So see, you can see some of this paint that's come down, how it looks pretty cool. Um, that was already there, that's not coming. Yeah, this is dry from before, I just let the paint. Now this is all flow trial right there from when we accidentally dropped it. So you can take a rock and go straight into a pile of paint. Um, just kind of set it on there and lift. And you'll get a really pretty effect on oop sorry a little pretty effect on there as well so you can make can't sure it's over it. so there you go so those are called dips it's another way to make sure you don't waste um a lot of paint yep i don't like to waste my paint yeah because she needs the paint a lot because she's an artist so you and can dip paint as you know <laughs> all right so we're going to go ahead and get out of here for today. Bye. I'm going to dip this one last one right here. And I am going to Messy hand hugs. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show them this dip here. So, I just wanted to hop on and share with you guys. Um, I know I talked about moving my pores onto parchment paper to finish their drying process, but I wanted to show you what you were looking for. So these have been sitting here since we were done um, with our live earlier today, and you'll be able to tell the tops are still wet. Um, you see like in the centers that they still look kind of wet. Uh, but the edges are dry and that's what I'm looking for is these dry edges and that's when I transfer them over to the parchment paper. Um, I'm going to grab one here. Sorry, I'm holding you so you can see better. You will have some areas underneath. I don't want to actually tilt it because it is wet, where you have some wet paint. When you set them down on your parchment, I always give just a little wiggle and it kind of spreads that paint out so you don't end up with those harsh drips. Um, 
underneath, but they'll kind of be a little tacky when you first pick them up. So just give it a little bit of a wiggle and then they'll peel up off of there when they're done. So um, I'll show you these here up close. I have some favorites. I just posted a little mini video with some of my favorites, um, but these just turned out so pretty. I really like this one. This one over here is really cool. They really are beautiful. So I don't know if she wants to do messages on the top. These were these, um, she's gonna do these for her Valentine's at school. She wanted to do painted rocks. So I don't know if we're gonna do like a heart on top or write a message on back. So we'll keep you posted on that kind of thing. So I'll show you one more. So we're looking here. See how you can tell the tops are still wet in the center. So they're not completely dry yet, but you can see how the edges are. So it's safe to kind of grab them quickly from the side to move them onto the parchment. And then just, like I said, just a little wiggle. See how there was a little bit of paint there? And that will make it so you'll have a nice smooth base where you can go back on and write a little message or your hashtag or whatever you like to put on the back of your rock. See, that one had a little bit more paint. So just kind of wiggle it around and you'll end up with a smooth bottom. This was a dip, so it doesn't really have any underneath. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with y'all. When they completely dry, I'll take a couple pictures. Um, they do kind of get a matte finish to them when they dry. There is one over here that's kind of getting there. Um, they get more of a matte finish when they dry. I guess that one is a little glossy on top. But once you put your sealer on, they, they look wet again. So I'm just going to get the rest of these transferred over. Oh, and then I do have one more thing. If you caught these here in the background. So one final thing that I do sometimes when I'm pouring is, I've shared these before, I make these little glass magnets actually i think they might be plastic so um you just dunk them right in the paint i've shared this before i think i made a few before but they turn out super neat so if you want a little information about that just ask in the comments i'll give you a little bit more it's not really rock painting but they're really pretty so i will catch you all later Bye bye